And now we bring you back to your regularly scheduled Raw Review. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Month or so. Ish. Something like that. Uh, so yeah, we, we talked about on our uh, Good, Bad, and Ugly video that we are going to change up the format. So we're going to try and shorten this video down. So we're just going to get right into what happened on Monday Night Raw. Uh, we had a big old storyline about uh, Braun getting fired and then rehired and destroying things. Yeah, he, he just beat everybody up in between the time. He beat up security guards. He beat up Kurt Hawkins in catering. He beat up a chocolate cake. Um, he, he beat, beat up, up a Michael, semi. He beat up Michael Cole. Um, Stephanie rehired him, though. Uh, to stop all of the uh, destruction. Either that, or I think she just thought the main event for the Rumble pay-per-view was uh, a better idea if Braun Strowman yeah. was in it. So, good on you, Stephanie. Old Kane and Brock isn't as appealing. Uh, we also had Titus Worldwide once again beat the bar, this time with a slight distraction by Jason Jordan. Uh, we had Cedric Alexander defeat Tony Nese. Uh, we had Asuka defeat Nia Jax due to ref stoppage. Uh, we had the Revival defeat a couple of jobbers, and then cut a really awesome promo. Which we'll Fantastic find, promo. Which we'll talk about. Uh, Elias intro The Miz and The Entourage because The Entourage would lose in a handicap match to Roman Reigns. Sonya Deville defeated Sasha Banks with a very strange move. Uh, Matt Hardy defeated Heath Slater with a twist of fate. Goldberg's going to the Hall of Fame. And Seth Rollins defeated Finn Balor in our main event. So with that being said... Uh, Stuff that we do, we want to do stuff we liked or stuff we didn't like first. Um, go out on a positive note or a sour note. <laughs> L- let's go like loved hate, like love hate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what did you like? What was the thing that you? What liked? did I like? Uh, I liked getting a rematch between Seth and Finn. That's always fun. Um, and I also liked that Seth brought the blackout back. Yeah. Uh, very un, very surprising. Shocking to see that move, and interesting because they they rarely ever used that name when it was existing as a move. It was like it was ju- like the name Blackout was just starting to pick up before mm-hmm. he started using the pedigree. Yeah, and so yeah, it was you know it's one of those things. It's like you know we never thought we'd see that move again, but now they're doing it again, which is fucking maybe cool. or is this is this just a one time thing only like when Punk. Pile drove John Cena on Raw. Ah, well, we might find out uh, either next week on Raw or the Raw Rumble. How about uh, something I liked? What did you like? Um, nothing. Just kidding. That's uh, a lie. It isn't okay. Right? You, had, you had a few of your boys on. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm. A, oh God, Millionaire Ted. Phil knocked him over. Yep. Well, it was trial and error week here on the rundown. We're just we're testing out this new. Yeah, set up, I set did up. not like that. Um, no, I'm going to go the Revival's promo. Yeah. I really enjoy the Revival's I promo. I really like this promo. Um, they talked about the fact that Stone Cold and the Outlaws and Shawn Michaels aren't old school. Which, I mean, to be fair, is not in- exactly inaccurate. True. I mean, if you would say, like, stunning Steve Austin and the Rockers, that's a lot more old school. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean... It was fun, and bringing back the term professional wrestler. We are not sports entertainers. We are professional wrestlers. Uh, that's yeah. a, that, that's a, I feel like tri- Triple H has something to do with this promo. That's a Stone Cold quote. Stone Cold has said on many occasions on his podcast that he was not a sports entertainer. He was a professional wrestler. Yeah, and uh, this is, the, yeah, like I was saying, I think I'm fairly, like, this has to be a Triple H approved promo because I don't think there's any way that Vince McMahon is going to let professional wrestler be his call. Yeah. Uh, because he's so... That's true. He's so dead set on the phrase sports entertainer sports entertainment sports entertainer yeah the fight not match you know it's like yeah i mean it, it, the, anything like anything that you could consider an old school term has been really just taken away or either just anything that makes it seem like a legitimate competition yeah yeah he he wants it to be so much more entertainment than it is yeah. Competition, which is what, what, sad. What was your favorite? What's your high point for Raw, though? What, mm. what did you love? What did I love? Oh, boy. You know, 
I loved Woken Matt Hardy. I loved not only the fact that he, he now has his... He has the whole gimmick back. He's got his own music. He's got his own... He didn't come out... That was really strange last week when it yeah. was the Hardy Boys stage set up and their LED thing. This week it was Woken Matt Hardy. The whole thing is put together. I also love the fact that after Michael Cole had been taken out, Tom Phillips, who's not usually on Raw, had kind of a shocked thing. He's like, you guys... What's happened to Matt Hardy? Because he's not around, and so mm-hmm. we actually had Corey and Booker kind of explain. It made it seem like there's an actual separation between Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, and so I, I I liked that addition from Tom Phillips, but just watching Matt be able to enjoy himself and a character he created, a character we've been waiting to see since him and Jeff arrived back in WWE. Yeah, I I, I loved seeing him be able to do that. And, like, the, the, one of my favorite parts was just him fucking with Heath Slater. Yeah. Slater, like, between the second and top rope, like, leaning back, and Matt just leaning down and just freaking him out. It's just, it's great stuff. So, yeah, I loved Awoken Matt Hardy. What did you, what did you love on Raw? What did I love? I loved Braun Strowman hurling Michael Cole. Who doesn't love and Michael the, Cole and- getting hurt? And then following, like, the other one, uh, s- little security guy who got beeled through a table. Oh, yeah. He planted through that table, and it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, but also, just, I want to say a uh, honorable mention to the referee who did the, like, stuntman dive over a table to get out of the way of Braun. <laughs> yeah. When he threw, the, when he was, like, like, shoving the dumpster. That's the great, yeah, that was a little Guido ref. Yeah. Uh, that's, like, like... I, I wasn't a fan of the semi truck this time, but I still love when they just let Braun be a monster. Especially when he bitch slaps some poles. I mean, he, well, he hit it with a chair. Yeah, he, that's how Braun bitch slaps with chairs. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I just I love watching Braun just get be to Braun. be Braun. You know, I was a little worried when he started to cut a longer promo than he normally does at the beginning. Yeah, but he still kept it short. And then he just did his thing, and it was, you know, even when he finally got his way, he still gave us the gift that keeps on giving. That's getting rid of Michael Cole. All right, and what did you not like? I don't, I still don't like Jason Jordan. Uh, Ooh, Jason but, Jordan. But I will say that Jason Jordan did give me Seth versus Finn, so I won't say that's what I hated. I hated watching Roman Reigns squash both members of the Entourage. Really? Yeah, because yeah. I've I you know I I get that Roman Reigns is strong, and I get that you know Bo and Curtis are fill in guys. They're they're the cronies to the Miz, and I understand that. But I feel Henchman. I feel like you know former champions should be able to do a little bit more damage than what they do. Yeah, I mean Curtis Axel has beaten Triple H. Yeah. As many times as Roman Reigns Curtis has. Curtis Axel is a former tag team champion, I Former believe. Intercontinental Champion. Former Intercontinental Champion. Bo Paul was, Heyman guy. Bo was, an, was the long, one of the longest reigning NXT champions. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like they should be able to do more damage to Roman Reigns, especially when Roman Reigns has no backup and Miz is out there in the Entourage's corner. Um, what did I dislike? Um... I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the Nia Jax Oscar finish. Um, it was definitely one of those things where I knew it was supposed to be something else. It, it was kind of apparent that may, they were supposed to maybe look at Nia like she got stuck where she was. Cause I, like, don't I don't know. It felt like it was like she wasn't supposed to make it into the ring before the 10K. I don't know. I I initially thought that. I, th- I thought you brought up a good point with that. But I think the fact that they did the Enzo thing afterwards because she had checked on Enzo with an injury. Yeah. I felt like that I felt like that was the plan. Well, if she got stuck, she wouldn't have necessarily been hurt and be put in that situation. But she so. was she was hurt from Oscar's kick to the knee. I don't know if that's what she was. She wasn't. She wasn't really selling the kick, though. I, f- I felt. I felt she was more selling the fact that she, her leg was trapped. Yeah. Behind the stairs. Reg- regardless, I think they could have pulled off the trainer segment 
with or without that. But no, the, the, the part that I really, uh, I'm going to say, grinded my gears was okay, Titus Peter. Worldwide beating the bar again. Due to Jason Jordan. The only soulless this go around is it was Apollo Crews got the pin. Yes. Uh, so we got and, to hear Apollo Crews' music instead of Titus's. And, at the end. Uh, that also that Sheamus is the one that took the fall on both of these tag losses. Uh, Titus yeah. Worldwide. Cesaro, not yet to be pinned by Horseface. <laughs> Um, or Apollo. Yeah. Uh, you know. Any other closing notes? Closing notes. Um, you know, I'll I'll give uh, I'll give an honorable like to the odd, but but definitely uh, helping Sonya. the The way she beat Sasha was yeah. very strange. I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it caught me off guard. But you know, the more I think about it, she is a trained jujitsu and muay thai fighter and so like strikes like that should be devastating from so from sonya yeah. and you know and it, it, sasha it, it, sold it like a champ so yeah regardless it's a lot of impact because sasha was jumping off the top rope that into too. a kick yeah so it's just it, it, it's it's i would expect more of a kick to the face out of that it would stop a match more than a kick to the gut but yeah i i, I appreciated the, i think it was supposed to be more uh, rib cage airway area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey talked about how it, it like knocks knocked the up, wind. Yeah, knocked the air out of her and everything. Um, yeah, that and then uh, you know Cedric and Tony, despite a couple of little flubs, had a really good match. Yeah. How about you? Closing notes. Um. But I guess the the only thing that left me wanting a little bit more out of Raw was the fact that there wasn't that much build to Raw twenty five. You know, I like. I feel like this was supposed like there should have been more like more matches announced because I feel like now they're only basing viewership off of saying all these big name people and Miz versus Roman Reigns and Miz versus Roman Reigns. So like, yeah, I I, I get that. I think I think the fact that we watched it without commercials and they were like hyping up different people that were supposed to show up because we came back. And while Absolution was coming out, Booker talked about what the Boogeyman's going to be there. So, yeah. like, you know, things like that. I think had we watched it on television with commercials, it would have felt like there was more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I the, just wanted, like, the a, only another, people another match, another match, two segments, or maybe talking about is Stone Cold going to be interviewing somebody? You know, is. You know, yeah, because Miz was really the only one that really, other than the commentators, really talked in depth about it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, well, and then and then Charlie with with the, the revival, revival as well. But the rival tried to bury it. So true. Which I th- I think that's the one thing that makes me really interested yeah. to see is what happens with the revival next week on uh, Raw. Dear God, don't let them get squashed by the acolytes, Dudley Boys, and New Age Outlaws. How mad will you be if that's what happens? As mad as I was when it happened to the Ascension. That's fair. Well, with that being said, that is our Raw review. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, click all the links down in the description. So many social media links. Uh, you know, all that stuff. Uh, we also want you to check out Reasonable Wrestling Fans. It's Reasonable the W. Like, like Wrestling. wrestling. Uh, yeah, we've, we we uh, we got one of our yeah. punishments out of the way. we still got one more to do. But that's, a, that's a quick one we can do anytime. Uh, we also should be having an unboxing video pop up over there pretty soon. Um, I felt like we posted something else over there. Oh, there was like there was a there was a month there was a month of stuff that we that we probably could have done but didn't do. No. Um, but we would like to know what other types of videos you'd like to see here either, or there. Yeah, on either channel. Uh, we should have an unboxing pretty soon. Like I said, uh, you, know, you can finally check out the podcast again. Um, it's over on SoundCloud. That's been uh, that's just been kind of sitting dormant for a couple of weeks. Uh, but this will be up there. Uh, so yeah, let us know what types of videos you want to see. Let us know what you think about the new set. Do you like the good, the bad, and the ugly? Yeah, because we we kind of enjoy doing that. So uh, let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't like. We appreciate all of your feedback. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. And as always, fuck, fuck Enzo. Enzo.